Hey folks, this is Kat from On the Balcony with Kat, and I'm doing something I don't normally do, which is I'm kind of doing a cooking video today. I uh, don't normally do this because prior to the fire I didn't normally cook, but among other things I'm actually trying to change that. So I am going to be making today a variation on a recipe that was uploaded by Mrs. Volfi from our Half Acre Homestead. Uh, a while back she uploaded a recipe for a meatball pie and I have decided I'm going to do my version of it which well my version is going to be different because I'm going to be making sweet and spicy meatballs uh, for this recipe uh, I use salsa I like uh, the paste thick and chunky salsa because well it has lots of vegetables and things in it you guys can use your own fresh made salsa or, you know, not anything at all. But I'm using this because it's what I do. And I need to get a spatula. But I separate a lot of the sauce from the vegetables. And I will be mixing that in to the um, meatball mix. So that I get all these lovely flavorful vegetables. Um, mixed into my meatballs before I cook them. So I will show you that once I've got all of this separated and whatnot. Now I'll show you what I do with the liquid that I separate out. Okay, and I'm back again. And we have two bowls now. One with the liquid from the salsa and one with the vegetable matter from the salsa. And what I do with this both of these, is I actually mix honey in with them. <coughs> uh, for my, I'm basically using my sweet and spicy meatloaf recipe, which calls for a quarter cup of honey to start. You mix it to taste with the salsa mixture. Um, and then you set that aside. The vegetable section of the salsa goes, gets mixed in with the meat to form your meatloaf, or in this case, meatballs. So, um, I'm going to add my honey. Uh, by the way, I always I prefer to use raw organic honey, but sadly I was out of the raw organic, and my husband had bought some regular store-bought honey, and sadly that's what I'm going to have to use. I don't really like the taste of regular store-bought honey compared to raw organic honey, but, you know, you do what you got to do. Um, I hope someday to be able to make this recipe using my own homemade salsa. But so far, I haven't been able to grow the ingredients right to be able to make my own salsa yet. So, um, Also, this recipe can be made in such a way that um, it's totally adjustable to your level of spice. Uh, for my husband, because he can't eat heavy spices, we go with just the mildest salsa. Me, I like my food a little bit spicier. So if I was just making this for me, I'd kick it up a notch and go with medium to hot. But, you know, your mileage may vary. Use what you like. So I'm going to mix the honey in, and I will be back. Sorry, folks. I realized you probably needed a bit of clarification as to the honey. Like I said, I start with a quarter cup of honey. Mixed to taste. Um, I poured half of this into the liquid and half into the solids and then I'll blend this up taste it and see how it tastes to me make certain that you know it's either sweet enough or not too sweet yada 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 because um, it's it's definitely a matter of taste um, some people would like this probably sweeter, others would probably like it not so sweet, which is why I only start with a quarter cup of honey. Uh, I blend it in. Like that. Whoop, it's not quite fully blended, but it should be enough to get a base idea. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, a quarter cup of honey for me is perfect for this mix. I um, actually came up with this recipe 
one of the few recipes I actually cook and came up with quite a long time ago. Um, I made it when my oldest girl was a toddler and um, she was a very very ficky, finicky picky eater when she was little and I had a hard time getting her to eat much of anything but I was also a single mother at the time and I was on a very very tight budget so I wanted to make something that I thought would last for a while but I wanted to also hopefully get her to try and eat some of it so I kind of went well meatloaf meatloaf usually lasts a while um, how do I get her to eat it okay I'll sweeten it up a little bit so I made this recipe up and I made a batch of meatloaf and it actually turned out amazingly good I was really stunned with just how good it was and I was even more stunned when my daughter not only liked it but devoured it the meatloaf that I had planned to last for a few days uh, to hopefully a week was gone in about two days she loved it that much um, I have periodically continued to make this recipe over the years and every time I make it um, everybody who tries it absolutely loves it I have not yet had anyone who does not like this recipe um, and usually they ask when I'm gonna make it again since I didn't really cook all that often this has been a far few and far between recipe for me so um, if you're doing it for meatloaf I suppose I should give you the the actual ingredients um, you use a pound of lean ground meat whatever your preference is I use ground beef because that's what I can get um, a quarter cup of honey um, your favorite salsa mine at the moment until I can make my own is paste thick and chunky um, I use mild because that's what my husband can eat um, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> it takes one egg um, let me think let me think let me think let me go check the recipe okay, one egg beaten usually um, but I'm making I'm making meatballs that's why I'm using the whole jar of salsa only two-thirds cup of um, salsa for the meatloaf so using a pound of ground beef or or a pound of ground pork or venison or whatever type of meat you like um, two-thirds cup of salsa your favorite your homemade salsa or paste thick and chunky or whatever salsa you like um, a quarter cup of honey mixed in with the salsa and the sauce I separate the sauce and the vegetables from the salsa the uh, the vegetables get mixed in with the meat um, along with the egg um, do, 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 the egg and a I think a half a cup yeah a half a cup of crackers crushed although you can use breadcrumbs if you like um, for kind of filler and to help absorb liquids and whatnot so um, it's one pound of ground meat one quarter cup of honey two-thirds cup of salsa one egg blended and a half a cup of crackers that's that's the entire meat loaf recipe um, you do the sauce like I've done here the vegetables get mixed in with the meat this gets reserved for afterwards but I'm going to use this in a modified way for the pie I'll show you how I'm using that later normally when I'm cooking the meatloaf this part goes in the meatloaf this part goes um, gets saved until about 15 minutes prior to the finish of the meatloaf and then this gets poured over the top of the meatloaf and it gets finished for 15 minutes with this cooking on top um, for the meatloaf recipe you're kind of getting two recipes in one with this um, you preheat your oven to 350 degrees and you bake the you put your meatloaf in a loaf pan or a casserole pan or whatever you use to cook your meatloaf and uh, you bake it for 45 minutes at 350 degrees at the 45 minute mark you take it out pour the sauce over the top of the meatloaf and put it back in for another 10 to 15 minutes depending on how hot your oven cooks um, and that's basically it for the meatloaf recipe 
but I'm going to be using this to make meatballs tonight to go into a meatball pie. So this will actually be going into the pie as the sauce for the pie. But this will be going into the meat mixture along with um, some sautéed mushrooms and onions and garlic that I'm also going to add. And I'm going to mix up the meatballs and then I'm going to cook them in a crock pot. And um, later when all is said and done, I will bring you back together when I'm going to assemble the pie. Thank you. Yep. Sautéing garlic, or not garlic yet, sautéing mushrooms and onions. When this is about close to done, I will add a couple of teaspoons of diced garlic, because I don't want to burn the garlic, and uh, mixing this up, and this will go into the meatballs, once it's cooled, of course. Uh, we'll make up the meatballs with um, this in the mixture, along with a couple of other things that I'll show you in a little bit. So, anywho, this is coming along lovely, and I wish you guys could smell it right now because it smells awesome. I used a bit of, oh, a bit of California roasted garlic extra virgin olive oil. Let's see if I can get this in the shot. Um, if you guys can find this, I highly recommend it. It's wonderful stuff. Really, really is. So, no, I'm not being paid by them. I just love this stuff. <clears throat> so, I will get back to you when I'm moving on to the next section. Okay, I realized I should probably show you guys the making of the meatball uh, mix. You know, this is my first ever cooking video, so I'm kind of new at this, so bear with me. Uh, I've got all my ingredients assembled. I've got my uh, ground beef and my salsa veggie mixture. I've got my sautéed mushrooms, onions, and garlic, which I'm adding to this. I've got my half a cup of crushed crackers, which I'm also adding to this. And my one egg beaten, which I will also be adding to this. Of course, it, needless to say, wash your hands very well before you do this. And, well, again, of course, obviously, needless to say, really well afterwards, depending on how you mix your meatloaf. I have a tendency to do it by hand because I find that's the best way to incorporate everything. So, which is going to be fun trying to turn the camera off when I'm needing to. So, that's all the ingredients that go into it. And, um, again, if you're making this into meatloaf, once this is all blended and incorporated, you just put it into a loaf pan and into a preheated 350 degree oven for 45 minutes. At the 45 minute mark, you top with the reserved sauce, bake for another 10 to 15 minutes, and you're good to go. And that's your meatloaf. But this is going to go into a meatball pie. I may need to mix more meat in here. I only put about a pound of ground beef, but I forgot that I used the whole um, salsa mixture. So I may actually have to go for two pounds of ground beef for this, which means that, you know, of course, add an extra egg and a full cup of crackers. So I think I'm going to have to do that because this is looking not quite enough. So I will get another pound of ground beef, but what the heck, because I can make up meatballs and tuck them in the freezer for later if I don't use them for the pie. So I will be back later. Alrighty then, time to make the meatballs. I really wish I actually had a uh, ice cream scoop, because from what I've seen, ice cream scoops are very useful for making very good sized meatballs. But you make do with what you got, and since I don't have one, I do this by hand. This is also my first time ever making meatballs, so again, bear with me, folks. And I hope I will be doing this right. Just taking a bit of the meat-vegetable mixture, rolling it into a 
a decent sized ball and tucking it into my crock pot. Uh, and I will just, you know, repeat. <laughs> Lather, rinse, repeat. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway. I also am not using lean ground beef, sadly. So these are going to be a little bit on the greasy side and s smooshy side. But once again, work with what you've got. Try to keep all your meatballs roughly the same size. And I will come back when I have this done. Whoop. Ah, uh, trying to... Messy fingers. Well, I have my meatballs made. Um, I have never made meatballs before again, so... Uh, uh, I should say, uh, again, I have never made meatballs before, so... Um, hopefully these turn out. I hope they actually hold their form because they were really soft while making them. But I'm going to go ahead and cook these up tonight. And uh, I just, I don't have the time to actually make the full pie tonight. So I will actually probably be making the pie for tomorrow night's dinner. I will cook the meatballs up tonight and let them cool and then tuck them into the refrigerator. And I will pick up with the rest of this video tomorrow for tomorrow night's dinner. Tonight we will do something else. Oh, I will show you these when they're done cooking. So, you'll get to see what they look like and whether or not they held together or not. And here are the meatballs. As, uh, I'm hoping they're done. It's time to test one, since I've never cooked meatballs before, or cooked... I've never cooked them like this, and I've never cooked them before in general. So, um... It's time to test them and see if they're done. So I'm going to select a meatball. Well, they look like they've held together well. And I'm going to cut it in half and see how well it is. I don't want to stir these around too much because I'm a little worried about breaking them apart. As you can see, there's a lot of liquid in there, a lot of fat. Luckily enough, I will be separating these from the fat. So, I will let you know whether or not these are done. Okay, here we go. I'm going to cut this meatball in half and give her a taste test. Give her a look, see, and see if she's done. Well, it's still pretty soft, but it actually... I don't know. Might be done. Might need a little more cooking. Looks like it might need just a touch more cooking. But I'm going to try it anyway. Yeah, just a little bit longer. I don't mind rare hamburger, but oh wow, that's tasty. That worked very well. So yeah, I'm going to cook these a little bit longer and then let separate them from the oil and let them cool and tuck them into the refrigerator to make into meatball pie tomorrow and you can probably hear my husband laughing in the background he's watching American Pickers or something so anyway um, that's that thank you for watching this is going to be a two-part video um, please check the notes underneath for the recipe for the meatloaf that's in a little better description than I can give verbally, obviously. I am, hopefully I'll get better as I continue along if I continue to make um, cooking videos. Thanks much. Take care. Uh, I'll see about uploading the next video tomorrow when I actually make the meatloaf, or the meatball pie. Bye-bye.